I'm at the Alfred Hospital with pharmacist Paul Maver. Paul and his team have toured the country educating people on medical cannabis. Firstly, welcome to Melbourne. Thank you. What got you into this industry? What was your inspiration? Um, I started off as a complete sceptic, but I, I saw some American data that showed overdose statistics with regards to opioids, and I found there to be a massive toll of people dying from something that pharmacists sell a lot of. And the same statistics, I saw that cannabis had a death toll of, of zero, which I thought, how can this possibly be true? This, this drug's dangerous. And the more I looked into it, uh, that cannabis is very difficult to overdose on um, and low on the addiction scale and has all these amazing medical benefits. And as time goes on, researchers are finding out more about the cannabis plant and our endocannabinoid system, something else I thought was um, something someone made up. And there's some amazing secrets that are being unlocked in the human body and medicine that give people an alternative. But some of these people have no other options. That's absolutely right. And you notice there was misinformation, stigma surrounding the plant. You've seen there was benefit to it. It's a relatively benign substance. Most of the doctors seem unaware of the great benefits that medical cannabis has. When will it be made clear that this medicine is for people and it is uh, one of the best out there compared to pharmaceuticals? I think it has to be put in perspective. It, there's a lot of evidence that we still need to get. Um, the, the evidence isn't all there. And for some conditions it is, it's overwhelming, uh, but for only about three, and we're, we're detailing them tonight. But we're also trying to get people excited by some of the other research that's going on, because whilst three conditions, there, there's clear evidence of the benefit of medical cannabis, some of the other conditions need a lot more research before they can be rolled out. So I don't think there's any benefit in, in either stating the benefits of cannabis, because there's, there's a lot of natural plants that are really, really toxic to the body, and especially when you're dealing with sick people, um, sometimes immune compromised people and children, you've got to be very, very careful how you roll it out. You don't want to um, tell people something that they're going to get benefit of um, and they're not going to achieve those benefits. You've got to be... Incorporating um, a good diet and a healthy lifestyle well, as well. Not only that, I think some people see cannabis as being the end to all their problems. It, it might be part of the solution, uh, but it might not. There might be other lifestyle factors that they need to consider. Mm, very important. Now, there's a lot of red tape when it comes to doctors actually prescribing the medicine to the patients that are so in desperate need of it. When will that be cleared up and the bureaucracy taken away and make it easy for the doctor-patient relationship to properly prosper? You're very right, the, um, the patient access is really, really lacking, but once again, it's the medical profession being cautious because they've never prescribed this. Um, but I do think it's something that doesn't need to be studied on rats for the next 50 years. There, there's a few conditions that I believe it can be rolled out now, and there's other conditions that are under investigation. Um, it will happen over time. I, mean, I, I always quote the example of Nurofen, uh, which you buy over the counter from pharmacies and sometimes service stations, was once a prescription only item. So I think over time, and this is, this is evident mm -hmm. in Canada and some of the American states. There'll be a natural progression as people find out more about what this can do and the benefits. The access will become easier, but access certainly is a lot of work at the moment because the Australian government have allowed for a really good cultivation system. Mm -hmm. and they've legalised it federally so people, scientists can research it and they've allowed for world-class manufacturing in Australia at the highest level anywhere in the world. Um, so eventually we can export it, but patient access is something they have not addressed and for some patients they're, they're running out of time. There is progress being made, but uh, as you said, they're running out of time. Some of them, it's their only alternative. Uh, your message to patients that uh, they've exhausted every other hope, they're counting on doctors to make it legal, give them that prescription. What sort of time frame are they looking at? Because uh, some of them, they're on death's door. Well, it is, a, it is a gradual thing. Um, I feel for those patients. I, I think um, overseas products have just landed and within a year or two you'll see some really good Australian product which um, will take a bit of time to get up to speed. An overseas Canadian product that I'm involved in importing, uh, it's been grown and sold for 15 years now and to get a local industry up to that standard is going to take a little bit of time. It will happen and I'm estimating that'll take a year or two. But now that doctors can write prescriptions, mm -hmm. uh, we're rolling out these series of educational classes and there's a bunch of other people like the um, Canton are doing an educational course and United Compassion are doing associated with yep. course. I understand there's other online courses. 
doctors have been able to prescribe it and without being able to prescribe it and see the benefits in their patients, nothing has happened up until now. So I understand the frustration, um, but these things will take time. I, I'm guessing probably in a, a year or so there'll be mm -hmm. completely different landscape because local product will start to um, be uh, made and manufactured. Patients will start taking that. Doctors will be a lot more educated than they are now and they'll mm -hmm. see a bunch of patients that have received benefit, hopefully from this. So I think the landscape in a year's time will be completely different, but when you consider that cannabis as medicine mm -hmm. has been banned for 90 years, I think we're doing pretty well. The fact that all sides of Australian Parliament came together and legalised that side of it, I think there's a lot of progress that's been made and there's some mm -hmm. really powerful advocates out there, some really patient, patient advocates out there, and there's a lot of stuff happening. Uh, that it is different from what, what's previously ha has happened. The right steps are being taken, and that's very reassuring. Uh, you've stated the medicine that's being imported is of the highest possible strain. The quality is, uh, you know, renowned top notch. Mm -hmm. The same can be achieved here, and that puts a lot of the potential growers here in Australia at a disadvantage. When will they be able to step into the market and provide for patients as well? Well, they're already issuing licences. Mm -hmm. We had. Um, Adam Benjamin from Medifarm present for us. Yeah. Um, we've been speaking to some of the other licensees. We've got the CAN group tonight. They've mm -hmm. been issued licenses. Yeah. Um, there's some really highly qualified growers here. Very positive. And we're also speaking to some people in Tasmania who are farmers used to growing opium poppies. And Tasmania grows mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. something like 70% of the opium poppies for the world opioid market. Um, and they're skilled farmers, they've got their processes all, all geared up. I think the Australian market is for medical cannabis uh, is going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. I've got strong hopes that some of the local producers have been making for years and mm -hmm. years will evolve and eventually be exporting some world-class product. That's excellent to hear. Do you know if they're going to put a cap on the amount of licences available? I th I'm not the one issuing licences, but I, I mm -hmm. think they've been rolling out a number of licences. Right. Uh, there are restrictions as far as um, growing it that you need to be able to prove there's a certain amount of patients taking it, you can't grow it in surplus mm -hmm. and they're looking at the security of the product, make sure there's no diversion. And is there a sufficient number of doctors practicing prescribing the medicine? Not yet, it's only early mm -hmm. days. No one's been able to prescribe anything because there's been no product. Right. Uh, the, the first imported product has arrived in the last couple of weeks and when local product hits the market, I think um, it'll be right for it. There'll people will be familiar with prescribing it, and they'll be able to switch over to local product, mm -hmm. and the industry will evolve naturally. See, there's a lot of positive headlines. People are feeling confident that the medicine will be brought to the forefront, but at this point, they don't actually know anyone that's received any medicinal cannabis, nobody that's actually you know, gone forward and they've had that doctor relationship. And if there has, is only here that one doctor in Queensland that's actually doing that. You're very right. Patient access is a real yeah. issue and something I'd love to change. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, it's an evolving process that um, I'd love to make a lot faster. But uh, unfortunately, without the product and trained prescribers, uh, there is that natural process. Well, you've enlightened the viewers at home on the right steps and where we're heading with medical cannabis. What it comes down to, whether it's imported or grown locally, Patients desperately need this medicine and Paul is helping provide that. Excellent.